Let's take a look at the discrete Fourier transform and often it's implemented as a fast Fourier transform and ask ourselves how does it relate to real signals? So if you have a vector of samples of length n for example, uh, in programs like MATLAB you can put that into a function, the FFT function, and it gives you a vector uh, which is the DFT. And what does that mean? Well, here's uh, it, what it does is it multiplies your vector x by a matrix, the Fourier transform matrix, and it gives you a new vector. This is this capital X. Okay, so what it, how does it relate to real signals? Well, what it does is it's assume, effectively assuming that this sample series, which is in the time domain, discrete time, but the time domain, it makes an assumption that it's effectively making an assumption that this the finite sequence here repeats itself. So it makes effectively makes an assumption that it's a continual signal for all time uh, and it, you've taken a sample from that, a finite sample of length n, and that that is actually then periodic, it's repeating. That's what it's assuming. Uh, even if your signal doesn't do that in reality, then it's making that assumption. And so that's going to give you this vector here under that assumption. And what does it, how does this construct it and how does this relate to real frequencies then? Uh, okay, so what it does is the first term here is the, the DC component or the zero frequency component. And so we're going to write this down for the discrete time angular frequency just to start with. So the first element here, if we have our indexing from 1, which is what it does in programs like MATLAB, indexes from 1, then the first one is the 0 DC term in the Fourier transform. And the last one, the, the one past the last one here, is in angular frequency, in discrete angular frequency, is 2 pi. And we recall that the discrete time Fourier transform, different from the discrete Fourier transform, but the discrete time Fourier transform, it actually repeats, the basis functions repeat every 2 pi. And there's a video on that if you're not familiar with that to understand where that concept comes from. So this is 2 pi, it's the element off the end of this vector. And I should say in this case uh, m equals n. I'm just drawing m here so that I can have a different index so that hopefully it's not confusing. So we're going to use n for the index in the time domain and m for the index in the frequency domain. And another interesting property of this discrete Fourier transform is this term here, which happens at the point m, capital M, so that's the length of this vector. So m divided by 2 plus 1 in that element along here, in that element, we get pi which is half of 2 pi. Okay, now what do these relate to in terms of the continuous time signal, so real signals? Well, in continuous time, we could write, let's write down what the frequencies are uh, in hertz. This is, uh, I think, a very uh, natural way to try to understand what this is. Okay, so zero is, of course, zero. And now we go from angular frequency to the real frequency, to do that you divide by 2 pi, uh, and then to go from the discrete time to the continuous time, you have to divide by the sampling period. So this one here, for example, that 2 pi, you divide by 2 pi to go from angular to uh, hertz, and then you divide by capital T, uh, so you end up with 1 on capital T. Uh, this term here is 1 divided by 2t. And you'll straight away see that this one here, if you recognize this, this is the Nyquist frequency. So when we're relating this discrete vector that you get from doing the FFT function in MATLAB on your time domain signal, then halfway, just past halfway, M on two, capital M on 2 plus 1, that element is the Nyquist frequency. So uh, let's, and, and the first element is DC. Let's just do a couple of examples to uh, help us uh, see what that is. If you were sampling at a period of 10 milliseconds, for example, then 10 milliseconds, 1 on T over here, this would be 100 hertz. This would here would be 
50 hertz. So your Nyquist rate would be 50 hertz if you were sampling at 10 milliseconds, and that 50 hertz would appear in your vector in your MATLAB in this element here, uh, capital M on 2 plus 1. That element along the vector would correspond to 50 hertz. If, another example, for example, if you were sampling at one millisecond, uh, sorry, at one millisecond, then this here would be 500 hertz. Okay, so the sampling time, the time that you take to sample, affects, tells you what the value of the frequency that this element in your vector corresponds to. And you can see that you've got another choice, you've got two choices. One is how long you sample your real signal uh, take to sample, so the sampling rate, and the other one is how many samples you take. So if M was bigger, you could take uh, 1,000 samples or 2,000 samples or 3,000 samples. This means that this vector gets longer and longer, but the halfway point along there is always the Nyquist frequency and is always given by this period of sampling. So for real signals, if you're sampling, we know that you have to sample at twice the highest, more than twice the highest frequency component. So for real signals, they are going to live in this frequency range here, from zero frequency, the DC frequency, up to the Nyquist frequency. So then we might ask ourselves, well, what are these frequencies here? And let's remember, in discrete Fourier transforms, the basis functions repeat every two pi. So actually, this is the frequency from zero up to the Nyquist here. And then this frequency range here repeats every two pi. That means this whole vector repeats every two pi, and it also repeats on this side as well. Okay, so this part of the vector here is also the same as what would be the case if you had this part of the continuous frequency range function. But we've only got this finite frequency range function because we only had a finite time duration that we did the sampling over. Okay, so this frequency range here is from pi to 2 pi, but because they repeat is also the same as the frequency range from minus pi to 0. And that is off here. Okay, so sometimes uh, this gets plotted because this is the same as as the frequencies here, sometimes when you plot, you actually take this part here and you plot it on the left-hand side, you plot a vector, which is this part on the left and then this first half of your actual vector. And in MATLAB, for example, this is a function called FFT shift. So that's the FFT function shifted in MATLAB so that the frequencies, this is a function in MATLAB, so that the frequencies have the zero frequency DC in the middle of the vector. Okay, but the straight DFT or the straight FFT function uh, has this formulation here.